In the previous two videos, we have seen count vectorizer and n grams vectorizer. So in this video, we will see another vectorization technique called TF-IDF. So it also creates a document term matrix similar to count vectorizer and n grams. And here the columns are individual unique words, same as uh, count vectorizer. And in n grams, we saw that uh, columns were uh, all the combinations of uh, adjacent words of size n, where n will depend on what gram we are using. So here it will be unique words, same as count vect. And cells, instead of containing the frequency of each word in a particular document, it will now contain a di different weight, which will be cal calculated using this formula. And it will denote a weight which signifies how important a word is for an individual text message or a document. And we will see why, how is this weight signifying that. So it depends on two things here. We see that one term is TFIJ, which is number of times a term I occurs in a document J divided by total number of terms in J. So if we have a sentence which contains five words, and a word occurred two times in that sentence, then it will be 2 divided by 5. And then we have that multiplied to log of n, where capital N is the total number of documents in that corpus, and dfi is the number of documents which contain the term i. So let's, uh, so what if uh, a term occurs very frequently in any document? then this numerator will be number of times i occurs in that document j. So it will be high divided by total numbers of terms in j. So that term is occurring very frequently in that document as compared to other words in that document. So it will be high if the frequency of a word is high in a given document. And this is in the denominator. So if this is a smaller, this complete term will be larger. And this term denotes number of documents containing i. So if this word is not very frequent in other documents, so if a corpus has 10,000 uh, sentences and we are looking at a particular sentence where some term i is occurring, but we see that that's not very frequent in other terms. That means that word is rarely used. That is not commonly used. That's why it's not present in other documents. So it will be smaller and the overall term will be larger. So uh, if a word appears more number of times in a given sentence, but it's a rare word, then this complete term will be large. So wij in that case will denote how important the word i is for differentiating that document j uh, when compared to other documents. So let's look at an example. So we are given, let's say, jth document in a given corpus is this, I am studying NLP. So first we need to calculate TF of M. Let's say we are calculating for this. So here I is this M. So this is occurring just one time here. So it will be one divided by total number of words, one, two, three, four, four. So it's 0 0.25. Now n is 200, so this corpus contains 200 documents. We are given this. And df of m is 2. So df denotes number of documents containing i. So it denotes that out of those 200 uh, uh, sentences or documents, only it's present in two sentences. So it's quite a rare word for this corpus. So now let's calculate the WAMJ, which will be the value of cell in the document term matrix. It's uh, 0 0.25 and multiplied by log of N is 200 and DFAM is 2. So this will be 200 divided by 2, which will be 100 and log 100 will be 2. So it will be 0 0.5. So now we are ready to uh, write the code for this. So it will be very similar to our count vectorizer code. So the first part is reading raw text, which will be same as count vectorizer. So let's run it. And here we are dividing 
uh, the data frame into two columns. One is the message and the second is the label containing ham or spam. And then uh, the text cleaning part will also be same as count vectorizer. In the n-grams, we had modified this text cleaning slightly and we were joining uh, the words, clean words after removing stop words. The list containing those uh, clean text we were joining into sentences separated by spaces because n-gram expects sentences so that it can look at all the n-adjacent words in the documents. But here we don't need to do that. Here the columns exactly uh, is same as count vectorizer, only the cell values represent a different weight. Whereas in the count vectorizer, the cells represented the frequency of a given word in a particular sentence. So instead of count vectorizer, let's change it to tfidf vectorizer. And it will also be present in this sklearn feature extraction dot text but it will be tfid vectorizer and let's create an instance of that and call it tfidf vect and this is our dummy corpus which contains three documents so we are fitting the TFID vectorizer on this, so it will create a vocabulary, but it will still not calculate the TFID values. When we do transform, it will do that and create the document term matrix. And uh, this is a sparse matrix because most of the terms are zero. So by default, it will be a sparse matrix. And then when we want to convert it to data frame, so doing this two array, it will convert it to a full sized matrix and then we can create a data frame out of that and print that. So let's run it. We see that uh, these uh, terms, the columns are exactly same as count vectorizer and these are the individual values. So the same as what we had calculated in our example. And this is the data frame which contains the TFID of values for each word in a given document. So now uh, let's do the same thing for our sample our data set. So let's just skip this part. This is doing on the complete corpus, which will be too big. So our, our, for our case, we will be picking up first 10 messages from uh, this SMS spam collection data set and let's name it tfidf2 and it will be here tfidf vectorizer and we will pass here our clean text function so we have not run it so let's first run it and then we will call the fit transform on this tfidf2 let's run it uh, so it says tfidf2 is not defined okay there is a typo here so now it has 10 rows because we had selected 10 rows of the entire data set and it has 131 columns. Let's print it. Uh, let's print the data frame. So this is the document term matrix and here we can see the columns are individual words. And in the first sentence, these terms don't occur. This W80 occurs and it's 0 0.25 and world is also 0 0.25. So world and W80, so it will be a tedious process to manually verify how many times this uh, W80 and world has occurred in other documents, but let's assume 
it's doing the right thing and it's giving the correct document term matrix. So we saw three types of vectorizers, one count vectorizer, then we saw n-grams and then we saw TF-IDF. So all are very similar to each other because here TF-IDF is similar to count vectorizer. Only thing is that instead of directly representing the frequency of a word in a given document, we also take how frequently uh, this word is occurring in any other document. So it will relatively filter out um, the words that are more important to a given document. So this weight will signify that. Whereas in n-grams, we were, instead of picking single words, we were picking all the unique adjacent n-words in the documents. So uh, with this, we will uh, end our uh, vectorization part. And in the next video, we will uh, start on uh, feature engineering, where we, where we will try to create some more relevant features, which are not uh, reflected here. We, here, we are taking features as the words. So there may be other features which are not present here, and we will try to create those. So see you in the next video. Thank you.